Hey everyone and welcome back to the It's Good To Talk podcast. So today we are with Skylar Sawatsky um, and judging on what her face looks like right now as to whether I got that completely right or not. Um, but uh, <laughs> Skylar has just um, emigrated over to uh, the UK. So basically today we're going to be talking about the stresses of moving, the stresses of completely changing because obviously a lot of people go over to different countries all the time and you know, you might go for a few months or something, but this is a big full on move for Skylar. Um, so just talk about the stresses that come with it, the hopes and everything like that. So how are you doing today, Skylar? I'm doing good. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot today, but I'm definitely trying to still explore the city. Yeah, yeah. You've got somewhere, some way to go, I think, with exploring London. It's a bit of an interesting one because it's a, yeah. a mile. It's a mile square city. But then there's just random bits that are in it, so it's uh, it can be it can be interesting. Um, yeah. So yeah, as I just said, obviously you have just um, come over here. Um, so where whereabouts have you come from, and how like how long have you actually been in England now? Uh, I came from a small town that's kind of near Calgary, Alberta, and I flew to London last. I landed last Monday, so I've been here officially two weeks today. Right. Okay. So really not long at all. So it's very, yeah. very kind of fresh for you. Um, just coming over from Canada. So you are the third Canadian that's come on to the, come on to this, um, along with Papa Paws and Call Me Chris. So um, you are the, you are the first, you. you are the first non-social social media person that's come on. So <laughs> you, you have a. You I'm have sorry. A... I'm not as famous then. Oh, no, the no, 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 no. That that makes you even more special. You are you are separate from them. You are just, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So, um, what made you want to come over to England? I know you've frozen there. I'm hoping that's temporary. So, what made you want to come over to England and and kind of um, completely change? Because I mean, there is a lot of things that maybe are similar between Canada and the UK, but there's a lot of things that are very different. I mean, taxation yeah. on things was an obvious one in my head, but what kind of prompted this? Uh, it's always been, a, I guess, a dream of mine to always just move abroad and to have that experience. I went to, right after high school, I went to uh, Dublin and I saw London for just a few days. I went to Paris for a few days. So I did a quick little like Europe trip just to say that I went here and yeah, honestly, when I was in London, I just, something just felt right. I don't really know how to describe it. I was just like, like jokingly, you're like, oh, this would be a great place to live or whatever. But I'm like, no, I need to move here. Like it just, since then it was just set in my head that I want to move here and I want to live here. And I just always found the country just beautiful and I love the history. And yeah, really since then, it's just, it's been in the back of my head. Like, like for example, my life in Canada, I didn't want to get too invested into anything because I was like, one day I'm going to leave one day I need to pack up and leave. Like, I didn't want to commit to anything, like career-wise, especially. I don't want to get to a really intense job that I couldn't leave, right? So I was like, because it was in the back of my head, I was like, one day I'm going to go to London. One day I'm going to like actually pull it off somehow. And now here we are. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, so when you've, you've just kind of packed up and gone, did you come over with a job offer? Did you just, have you just kind of landed and gone, fuck it let's see what happens or you know what's what's kind of the plan kind of okay kind of, yeah I uh I really I guess really started seriously thinking about doing move in July July I remember when I started like actually deep building visas and how to do it all and then I applied for the visa I think it was October I got it by November I had to go out to Edmonton and actually officially signed stuff by December I think I had all the documents and for Christmas I booked myself a plane ticket and what I have is a work visa but I moved here without a job so I kind of did just throw myself in here okay so you've we, we've we've kind of um just kind of hoping you've done the Paddington Bear approach just turning up and going right okay <laughs> Uh, maybe without the jam sandwiches, um, marmalade sandwiches. What I mean, I still love that. I still love that movie. It's so. <laughs> but yeah, so you you've really kind of just uh, thrown yourself into. It. I mean, I have a similarish thing with um, with other uh, other countries uh, with Hungary and things like that. I've been very kind of go there and kind of go. Okay, this this feels good here. I like this. And when I've been to Northern mm -hmm. Europe, 
I, I tend to make the joke to people that um, at least people are the right height here because um, I'm six foot two. And um, and in, in the Netherlands, for instance, the average height of a man in the Netherlands, which is the tallest country, is six foot. So I'm slightly taller than the average man in even the Netherlands. So I'm like, OK, people are the right height here. Interesting. And Norway is well. Norway, the right height. So I always kind of um, have those connections when I, I travel as well. I mean, I've this is the longest I've spent in England currently since um, mid-December. I, I, I yeah, I, I hadn't spent more than six. Actually, no, this is. Yeah, this is the longest by one day. I hadn't spent more than six days in England since um, since December. It's now for anyone that's wow. wondering, it's now seventh uh, of March when we're recording this. So I, I've I've been doing kind of similar thing. Um, but was there something when you say there's something kind of you connected with with London? Was there something in your mind then that's just made you think, you know, I'm gonna be in a better place there? Was there anything that was kind of that you didn't feel connected you said you you were making sure to not be connected but was there anything that was making you feel disconnected then back in Canada um kind of I guess like yeah, I what I call it was like a temporary mindset everything in my mind I was doing since that trip was like temporary I didn't want to like get into a serious relationship. I didn't want to get into my career. I went to school only for two years instead of a four-year degree because I was like, I need to be ready, I guess, to just move. Right. When when right or when whatever, like whenever it felt right, like I need to be ready to move. And I remember like even right after I graduated, because I graduated from college 2019, summer of 2019. And I remember like telling people like, they're like, oh, what are you going to do? Like, are you applying to jobs and stuff in Calgary? And I'm like, they're like, I'm like, yeah, but I think I'm going to move. And they're like, what do you mean you're going to move? I'm like, I think I'm, I'm going to end up moving. I thought maybe Vancouver or like a bigger city in Canada or something. And then of course I got into a little part-time job and then the pandemic hit and I ended up moving back home. That was my move then. But then when I was back home, I was like, my next step needs to be international. Right. Like I ended up saving enough money and I was like, my next step needs to be, if I'm going to do it, I need to do it now. I need to jump to England now. Okay. So it was, so I think like probably quite a few people. I don't was, know if that really answered your question, but. I mean, it, near enough. Uh, so, so, I mean, potentially then for, for yourself, it was a bit like, I think a lot of people during the pandemic, the pandemic basically made you go, Okay, that thing that I was kind of thinking about, the thing that I was not sure about, but I was I was thinking maybe I'd I'd do something a little bit different. The pandemic's made you go, no, fuck this, I'm just leaving the country. It's made you kind of yeah. fully commit to doing something else. I mean, when the pandemic hit, I I was working for a university. I quit basically as soon as the pandemic hit, um, and then I've now moved into things around mental health um, and various different things, but. Um, and online. I mean, I'm I'm now f- f- much older than the other people around me, but I now live on social media. I'm I've I've gone from not really understanding it to being someone who my nephews suddenly go, "What the hell is Uncle Adam doing on there?" Um, so it is it is weird. People have yeah. completely changed. So do you think then the the pandemic was was the the kick? I don't know if this colloquialism will make sense, but the kick up the ass you needed to basically go do it yeah it it was it was as I said because I went back home it gave me time to save money and it gave me time I guess just to really think and like especially when you're grad as soon as you graduate from school you're like okay I need to find a job I need to get a job 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 and then it kind of because I didn't honestly start my career right away it kind of pushed me back I was like okay I have this time I could push for that career but I have this time basically like to just sit down and think and I'm like yeah like now now is the time to kind of do it and to go take that actual step yeah so how was your um obviously uh, there's a, a massive thing that comes with um leaving home I mean to put it in perspective even when when I was younger so my sister Janine hello Um, When we moved to, um, I know my sister doesn't watch this, but just in case, my nephews might say, hey. Um, But when we moved, when I was very young, we moved to the Isle of Wight, which is off, which is one of the small islands off of, um, off of England. 
um, and my sister had massive homesickness just from us being not on the mainland of the UK. Um, and just that alone, when, you know, realistically, there's no, you know, we're inc we were incredibly close. It was just one of the islands off. Um, so mm -hmm. just from that, my sister, we moved back to the mainland. So how has this affected you or has there any, been anything that's kicked in yet going, I'm thousands of miles away from home? I mean, I don't know how connected you are to your family, because obviously some people would be very kind of, I need to be near my mum, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, my aunties, my uncles. And then there's some people like myself who are just like, eh, I can be thousands of miles away as I'm okay. But has that hit yet? Is there a recognition that it might hit? Or is there anything around that you're thinking at the moment? Yeah, as I said, I've been here for two weeks. And I want to say that first week was the hardest. Mm -hmm. I kind of, so I left Calgary the Sunday landed here the Monday and to adjust the time difference and stuff I just tried to stay up on the Monday stay awake on the Monday and that day that the Monday the Tuesday and the Wednesday I just went like full force tourism I was like okay hey, gotta see Big Ben gotta see them like gotta see Buckingham gotta see all these sites and I just kind of went like tourist 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 and then I was like I gotta get my resident card I gotta get my bank card set up like I just basically dove into trying to start my life here and then all of a sudden my I got sick like, so actually to go back before I left Canada, I got COVID when I was supposed to fly out. <laughs> so I was like, okay, is this a sign that I don't do this? Um, but it actually gave me that, that extra week gave me more time to plan and like evaluate and stuff. So I'm kind of grateful that I got sick when I did. And then I got sick again after a few days and I was like, crap, is this COVID again? Or is it just my body like realizing like you need to just chill and process that like, you just moved across the world? And then, yeah, because I was sick and I didn't really do anything, I it kind of hit me where I was like, oh, I'm alone. I know no one. And like when I had COVID, I am quite close to my family. We, I was in a small town. My pretty much my whole family's around that small town, if not all in Alberta. Mm -hmm. And I, so I had people to help me. And so then all of a sudden, like just being, and it, it was just a small cold. It was for a few days in the end. But it was like, I'm completely by myself here. And then I kind of got over it, ended up trying to set up things more. Like I just went like full process mode of getting everything set up. And then it was, I think it was, it was at the week mark, like the next following Sunday, I think I, yeah, I had a whole mental breakdown of just crying and just being homesick mm. where I was just like, holy shit, I am completely alone. Cause at that point it was basically like a week where I hadn't really talked to anyone. I'm in a shared home right now, but I don't really talk to the people I live with I don't really talk to people I've interacted with on the streets just like you know the wait waiter and waitresses I come across and stuff like that and I was like holy shit I haven't had a proper conversation much less a hug from anyone for a week and that was from my family like I haven't hugged my family been with my family for a week and it kind of hit me there where it's just like damn I'm I'm here and I guess yeah it felt like when I first landed like they were just like a province away like it was like they were across the ocean yeah so it didn't feel as far yeah but yeah it, it is one of I think for, for a lot of people especially if you are close to your family it is that thing and like I say it's that it's that registering it's when you first land you're like oh yeah yeah it's fine and then suddenly yeah. your mind went no Skylar it, it's it's not it's yeah. a fucking it's a, it's a long journey um and it, yeah going to be really it's going to be really hard really difficult i think it's interesting when people always talk about the um you know you you got covid and is this a sign i off i i I'm, to me signs of bullshit but then what i will take is that um i think if you think of it in terms of it being a sign it is because you want it to be and um, the fact that you've gone past that is the fact that clearly you wanted to do it but I think for a lot of people out mm -hmm. there, whenever you whenever you have the thing of is this a sign I shouldn't do it, then it's not it's not that you shouldn't do it. It's that your mind clearly something you haven't resolved in your head is going, dude, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, like mm -hmm. I plan for for instance, purely because of the situation at the moment, I plan to go to Ukraine at one point in my life, and I fucking will do. I was I had mm -hmm. tickets and I was meant to fly there. I should be there now. The reason I'm in the UK for this long is because my next ticket to leave was to the Ukraine. Was Ukraine. 
So yeah. my ticket was kind of fucking useless after stuff happened. So I should be there. I should have been in Kiev. So um, is it a sign that I shouldn't go? No, it's a sign that other shit is happening. It's it's just yeah. that it's a bad. It's a, it's a sign you just need to you need to step back. And yeah. that was what I saw COVID for me. Is I was like, okay, I have a week to recover, which also means I have an extra week to fully plan things. Like I didn't have a plan on how I'd get from my place from the airport. And so that gave me time just to think of little details like that, because I was like, I'm literally forced to be by myself in isolation. So might as well fully do some Googling and research. Exactly. And I mean, I, I ended up going to the Netherlands for, for another few days because I thought, well, I'll just go there instead because I like the Netherlands. So it's, it's mm -hmm. like you say, is that it's that thing where you're just going to go, OK, well, I can't do this right now. That isn't necessarily a sign. It's more of a, an opportunity. And I think that's that's what a lot of people can struggle with because it's it's that mindset of how determined you are to do that specific thing yeah and, and that's um i have another point i guess to make about sorry to cut you off about oh, okay. like a sign i'm gonna call it my best friend she's gonna be mad because she is probably gonna watch this but there was a moment where i was struggling to apply for my visa because i had to submit certain bank documents and for some reason, that was the hardest part. Like my bank either wouldn't give me the right documents or I had to wait until the next statement and the next statement and it was month after month. And I remember I was sitting in her living room and she's like, maybe this is a sign that now it's not the time. And I have never cried this much. I completely broke down. And I just remember I was sitting her on her couch in her living room and I was just like, I have to. I have to go to England. And I was like, what am, what else am I gonna do? And I not to sound dramatic, but I literally like saw my life flash from my eyes because I was like, what am I gonna do? Am I just gonna stay at home? Like I didn't have any else anything planned. I didn't have a plan B. I wouldn't let myself have a plan B. I was like, I need to go full force. Like my plan B, I guess, if I don't get a job and whatever, is obviously go back home. But I was like, I don't have a plan B otherwise to go to England. Like I'm not gonna stay at this little job that I'm at and stay at home, like either. I'm going to go to England or I'm just going to go to England. Like she was just, yeah, she was, she asked me, she's like, what if this is a sign? And I just remember I just cried because I was like, no, I have to. Mm. And that was like in the gut, gut feeling where I was like, I have to do this. And then when I got COVID, it pushed me more because everyone's like, how are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you ready? Are you prepped? Are you packed? Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I just need to get there. Like COVID just made me so much more determined because like, I just need to get there. Like, I don't care if this is going to kill me. And then a few days when I was trying to get everything ready, I got in a small little car accident and I was like, okay, this could be another sign, right? Like all these things keep happening. I'm just, and by that point I was like, I just want to get on the fucking plane. Mm. Like, I just want to get to England. I don't even care what happens after. I just want to land. I just want to get on that plane. By that point I was just determined. Yeah, it is that thing. I think your mind was probably looking for reasons not to go, but when it couldn't find them, you just did it. Um, there's, there, I mean, there is yeah. there's actual research into luck, which is um, the fun thing, because you always get people to say that they're lucky or not lucky. And it's a similar kind of vein of when you're looking for something that's a sign or not, in that if you are lucky or if you're looking for a sign, you find it because you're looking for it. Um, you know, when they did mm -hmm. research into people that thought they were lucky... They found that when they put money on the floor and things like, things like this as part of the research, people that felt they were lucky looked down, looked for it. People that felt they weren't lucky literally walked past it. They both had the same opportunity. The same thing was happening to both people. There was no change in what was happening. It's just that one of them, in similar to when you're looking for that sign, you look for it. You find it because you go looking for it. I think is right. the thing is if yeah. your mindset becomes that, you find what you need to. It's the same as, as anything. It's like when people um, flip a coin, the argument is always that you know which, which version, head or tails, you want. And that's kind of been part of that flip yeah. of the coin. You always actually know what you're going to do. It's just that you need to tell yourself that there's another option. You need to make it be the world's, the universe's decision because that, that allows you to disconnect yourself somewhat and allow it to be a, a, just a, a chance thing so I mean you, you said that it was quite emotional and obviously you broke down so has there been in the past before any of this a um and any issues specifically with any kind of specific mental health because it seems like 
there's been a definite kind of need for something else, uh, you know, uh, a fixation on something happening beyond that. So was there any other things in your past that may explain this or kind of give you a reason that made you want to kind of break out or anything like that? Um, that's a hard question. I don't, I think a lot of it, the emotional part was more anxiety and just nerves and stuff. But I, I know for like the pandemic, especially getting to England was also a sign of me getting back from independence. Cause I moved to Calgary. I went to college. I had like my own little like independent life and then I moved back home hmm. and I definitely, I don't know if other people felt like when you move back home, you're starting to buy your family again, especially like as an adult, like I don't want to get treated as a kid. So it was a determination in that sense that I want to get back my independence. And I think it was just to get the freedom and just to say that I did it because yeah, I'm from a small town and none of my family has ever done anything like this are not huge travelers. Half of them haven't been anywhere besides like the States. Like they barely have traveled internationally. And it was just kind of a thing. I was like, I need to do this. Like it just, yeah, it's just by the end of it, it was like, I need to get my independence and I need to just basically, I guess, live the life that I've always thought I've wanted or just imagined. And for some reason that peak was England. <laughs> There's a lot of English people now, if they're watching this going, what the fuck is the matter with her? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, most of us are trying to fucking leave. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it, it is, <laughs> It's an interesting thing. I mean, I find it more interesting because so many people I know. And so I, I find this is I don't find Canada that entertaining personally. Clearly, you don't yourself because that's why you've come here. But so many. I mean, it's great. It's a great country. But yeah. <laughs> but so many people I know or have known or just in the background, it's always, oh, I, I want to go and live in Canada, or I want to retire to Canada. So it was quite interesting when I first kind of connected with you when, when I was like, wait, you've gone the other way. Like everyone else seems to want to go to Canada. Like Canada's, because it's it's the idea that Canada is is um, America without the bullshit is kind of the idea. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's cozy. It's nice. It's homey. It's welcoming for sure. Yeah, it's that, it's that kind of idea. It's, it's very strange because like I said, so many people kind of do do that. It's, it's interesting you saying about being from a, a small town and everything like that. Because I mean, I'm from, a, I'm from a village, which in the UK really does mean village. Um, I'm from a, a small village in, in, um, in, in West Sussex originally. And similar to you, my, my family do not really travel in. In fact, I do genealogy and I went back to 1752 and they were just from the next county over. So they were not. Full. Yeah. So <laughs> I know my family is the same. Um, I, I'm, I know my family tree really well. They're all pretty much from Alberta, but then I do have a lot of second family, which I'm going to get to eventually. That's from Devon. But again, like here in England, but they were just either in Devon and then Alberta, like they've <laughs> gone little ways and they, they've stayed though. At least it was a few thousand miles difference. I mean, at least it was that, <laughs> you know, there was but like that was when they immigrated to Canada, right? There were black sheep a couple of hundred years ago. And then it was just like, no, fuck that, we're going. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is it is interesting like that. It's, it's, you always find there's there's a, one person in a generation that just goes, nope, I'm I'm done with being here. <laughs> fuck this. Um, and it is, I mean, I am, I, 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 th I mean, I, I do have a sister that now lives in the north, but like, I'm definitely the one that's gone around everywhere. And I'm the only one, I think, that's gone, you know what, I could yeah. just not live here. I could just go to... Yeah. Hungary I, I, I you know I mean Hungary Jesus anyone looking for you know you can't afford a house in England Hungary um <laughs> it's just Jesus Christ um okay well maybe I picked the wrong country then if oh, it's too I mean I just there. came back from Jordan as well and in Jordan uh yeah I mean a taxi costs whatever you give them which is my funniest thing about <laughs> Jordan it's literally there is no set cost it's you literally get in a taxi uh, unless you've done a thing beforehand, say you do a 20 minute journey in a taxi, you then give them however much you think it should be. And they either say fine or they ask for more. It's it's weird. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, weird, I, yeah. it's, it's amazing. I did a, an entire trip. I did a, a four hour, four or five hour uh, tourist trip there with a taxi driver and it cost 50, 50 uh, uh, pounds. I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, <laughs> There we go. Um, but yeah, it is interesting. Obviously, there's there is that um, there is that thing of just wanting to kind of 
get away from it and, and really do that. So are you someone that you think you're going to be able to really push back against um, your feelings before? Or do you think you will get them again where you go, I need to leave? Like, is it going to be the case of now you've moved to England, but you go, OK, I've got a job in England, but maybe I should be in Paris or maybe I should be in, you know, Moldova. Maybe I should be in um, uh, Kyrgyzstan or, you know, is yeah. that a thought that you think may keep happening? And so, you, I mean, you, you might end up, you send them, you're not a social media person. Maybe you'll end up as a travel blogger. Um, I mean, is the, do you feel that that might be something that, is there that kind of wonderlust? I mean, there is the for anyone that has um, for, for Facebook, Instagram, Tinder, everything like that. Don't fucking use the word wonderlust. Everybody else on the planet is using the word <clears throat> wonderlust. This is the only time I will use it. But do you feel that there okay. is that kind okay. of thing as part of you that you just kind of go, you know what? I need to go somewhere else. That's the thing I haven't really actually thought about. Like, I think since. 18 I've just been set on England and just set on getting here because my mind is like England would be a home base and I could see the rest of Europe like I am obsessed with Europe I want to see all of Europe I want to go to all the countries but it was my mind I was like England would be the home base because it's so cheap for you guys here to just pop over like it's ridiculously cheap like I'm not going to go into Belgium like on the weekend because it's just so easy but so I'll, my mind, I was like, England would be home base. I'll send you, I, sorry, I, I'll send you the websites to get them really cheap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was my idea of if I could get to England, it was an easy speaking English country. And because it's part of the Commonwealth, it just seemed easier to get with because you guys are the queen, we were the queen, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, I could just bounce back and forth. And so I always had the desire to travel still, but for some reason, England was in my mind, always going to be the home base. And I did kind of have a thought the other day where I was like, okay, like, because I was so determined just to get to this country, I didn't ever think of what happens next. Mm. Right. And that's a question, I guess, to get all metaphorically here is you think about, you know, your dreams coming true. My dream was always to move to England or to my dream was always to live in London, but you never think about what happens after the dream comes true. What happens when you wake up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I kind of had that, like, I guess epiphany or whatever, where I was like, Okay, now what? Like, obviously, I need to get a job. I always need to survive here. But it's like, now what? So you asking me, am I going to always have that um, wanderlust to continue traveling? I don't know. I Maybe. Yeah. I just was so focused on getting here. I don't know what's going to happen next. And who knows? My visa's for two years. And maybe at that two-year mark, I'll want to go to a different European country or I'll move back home. I don't fully know. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I haven't thought that far. Two year visa is a long amount of time. And I mean, I, I would suggest, firstly, not just staying in Europe. Um, I mean, I, I just came back, like I said, I just came back from Jordan uh, a few weeks ago and I spent like a week in the desert. And that's always a fun one. Um, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. Contacting people that I'm doing stuff with and just going, sorry, I haven't gone back to you. I was in the desert is always a fun <laughs> just to see what people's responses. Some of them are just like, yeah, that makes sense. Some of them are going, what the fuck are you doing there? Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely, I think it sounds like, it sounds like you have that thought of continually moving around, but you kind of know that you need to have, or you think that you need to have a central point of doing things. Yeah. I'm gonna stay here and then I'll just go there and there and there and there. And like you say, I mean, Yes, it was incredibly, I, I always find it really amusing um, from Americans, especially because of how um, uh, expensive uh, flights are over there of mm -hmm. the difference in price. So, I mean, for instance, Jordan, I was just talking about, which is the Middle East. The return flight there was £45. Um, That's so cheap. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I always, think, I always think flights is a couple hundred bucks, not <laughs> over like under 50. So for 200, for 200 pounds, um, I could uh get to florida um <laughs> so which really annoys my american friends who are like i could do the same trip and it really wouldn't cost that so i get 200 200 to go to the next state what the fuck um yeah so, literally, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's i mean I, I i've i flew to i flew to greece for nine pounds from greece to hungary for nine pounds i took a train from hungary to austria for seven pounds 89 and then i flew from austria to england for three pounds yeah you tell me all <laughs> this just makes me want to go take out nine pounds and do that 
It's, I mean, this is the thing. I think this is the advantage you have at the moment because you don't have a job. Um, or, or or even if you, if and when you, you do, depending on what it is, um, the ability to just be like, okay, I'm just going, I'm just going away. I'm, I'm just going to go tomorrow. Yeah. You know, Because you could literally, you could find, I mean, I could do it now. I could go onto certain sites and find a flight for tomorrow morning for nine pound or for five pound or for six pound. And just be like, okay, we'll get there. The more expensive part of it is the train. But then you've got the National Express, so you could just do the same thing and get that for a fiver and go to the airport. So it does have its advantages by by having that. So I think that is probably a big advantage for you at the moment before you get a job. Um, but, yeah, which is why I'm like, I'm going to go to Belgium, I think, because I could take a train. That's, sorry to all my Belgian friends, but that is possibly the most boring country in Europe. Um, <laughs> I, it's just sweet because it's because of the Eurostar. I was like, oh, I can just take that. <laughs> Just the Eurostar is also the most expensive way of doing that. Jesus. Hey, um, teach me. Teach me. Then I don't know this thing. Like, so I will, uh, when we go off camera, I will have, I mean, this is <laughs> Jesus Christ. That is the most expensive way of doing anything is the Eurostar. <laughs> just, I just thought, okay, <laughs> my bad. I need, I need a lot to learn then here. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to Belgium, then you can go into France and Netherlands by train. It'll cost you nothing. Anyway, this will turn into a travel thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it is very cheap. And it is that advantage. You can just go, right, I'm going off somewhere and I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a really good, good thing. I mean, obviously, um, I mean, I connected uh, with you because of Yes Theory, um, because yeah. of, of the thing on, on Facebook, which I always love the fact that Facebook is basically a, a dying social media, but for certain brands yeah. like Yes Theory, it's where a load of people connect. And you're like, how the fuck is this happening? Because everyone is, is part of this is under 40, and yet no one under 40 uses Facebook. What the, um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. I just I literally just use it for groups like that, just travel groups, really. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, and Yes Theory obviously has that has that kind of thought in it of just going, you know what? We're just going to do it. I mean, that is that definitely fits the way that you said it. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what Yes Theory is, Yes Theory is basically a group of um, a group of guys from around the world. I mean, from um, Canada, from France, from uh, France and Sweden, one of them uh, from Egypt, from America, who just basically built themselves up as an international company to just kind of go say yes to things not not like yes man mm. not like jim carrey of just you know giving homeless men um just drives into the middle of the woods but no actually just kind of you know let's just do it let's you, you know you feel about skydiving let's go and do skydive and things like that um yeah and so yeah. it definitely fits that kind of brand of doing things do you think that there is um a a specific pull you said there was a there was a there was a part of london that you just thought it was right but do you think that there, there's a pull that has always been there of just needing to not just not be where you were brought up not be um standing still of always wanting to do something i mean you said you went i mean you've been to college or you dropped out of college what did you do i went I, to college okay so what did you do yeah. what was your degree so i I got a, I guess you could call it an associate degree because it's not like a full degree. Okay, so I went to school for foundation here. Sorry, yeah. I went to school for marketing, and then I got a graphic design certificate along with that. But so, I went, so yeah, I went to business school and kind of just got that in my pocket. So two parts of a degree that can be done anywhere in the world, and in fact, probably are. Are benefited from not standing still so that that's why i wondered of just kind of like what because some obviously some degrees are very you need to kind of be there to understand it um but yeah no it's just just for anyone that's wondering or anyone that's in england and things like that one college um she means university um purely so the reason i'll say that is because americans and, and canadians have the same thing college in england is a lower level it's what you do between 16 and 18 so, yeah, I've I have heard that term. Yeah, so it can be when, like high school. It's yeah, it's really strange when people say college because you're like, okay, do you, does that mean you're only 16 or does that mean you've left university? Which um and also an associate's degree over here would be a foundation degree. Um I don't know why we have it okay. as different names, but it's just it's a foundation. I'll update my resume with foundation degree then. Yeah, because they just might not know what it is. So it's just the it's a two-year, a two-year thing that you can do, and then you either go on or you just have it as a foundation yeah. degree. 
so yeah, yeah exactly that's the same thing so it's just that we call it we call it different things but it's the same thing i just know that occasionally when i've had people on from different countries somebody will say something and then i'll have someone in comments or someone just message me going what the fuck were they saying um <laughs> but, uh, a lot of different words yes um but yeah it's, it's interesting that so do you feel that you picked something did you always have an interest in that or did you pick something that meant that you could do it anywhere because obviously like i say even in business you could have picked something that would have been very canadian centric very country centric mm -hmm. but you pick stuff that i mean marketing especially and anything online well kind of lends your it lends you to be able to do stuff anywhere in the world yeah so actually i wanted to be originally be a musician okay. and i applied to go to school to be a flutist and then again because i had this thinking of moving abroad one day, I uh, I backed out. I got accepted into a school and right when I actually had to pay tuition and stuff, I backed out and I was like, cause I had, first of all, people asked me, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to just be a music teacher to survive. You're not gonna basically make it big enough to actually make it a career. Or if you are gonna make a career, you're gonna have to move to the big city, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, fine. I'll put music to the side, get something basically in my back pocket that I, I can do anywhere like business. And I chose marketing more just because it's more creative and more fun than like accounting. And yeah, I basically just thought I should get something in my pocket. And I definitely wasn't thinking like, I need to work a business job in Calgary. Like I wasn't thinking that at all that I need to just stay there. I was thinking just to get something general is one of the main ideas. Okay. Do you feel then potentially, or do you worry that you're your, your need to not be in a certain place or at least at you know your home country for a certain amount of time has meant that you've missed out on things because obviously if you wanted to be a flautist and that's meant that you've not gone into things um has that do you feel like oh I could have done that and I've missed out or is it kind of I can go back to that or well it would have led me down a different path is there any part of that where you you worry that although you're completing your dream or at least starting your dream, you've missed out on things that could have taken you down a different path to another dream. Yeah, for sure. I think music wise, I always just want to keep that in my back pocket. I think that's the thing I can always come back to as, but as I mentioned before, like I did live in like a temporary mindset and I definitely, I think did limit myself. Like I held back from relationships, for example, like I didn't let myself really date because I didn't want to get in a committed relationship because my mind I was like I don't want someone to hold me back when I want to go chase my dreams and move abroad and same with like it's at my age people are starting to have kids and stuff and not we're getting married and I was like I don't want that yet I need to get to England first and so I definitely held back on that side of stuff so yeah I think some things I do feel like I was missing on but other things I don't worry about too much I'm like I can always get there yeah well, i mean definitely for, for marriage and, and kids the average age in europe in general and in england is um 30 plus so you're you're still fine it's it's for some reason europe are just like no no no, no, no. chill out just <laughs> but, but yeah you know what i mean like it was that definitely yeah. one of that was a big part of my life that i just didn't do like people are like aren't you dating and stuff i was like no because i don't really want to date here because i don't want to get st stuck with a guy in canada <laughs> okay so this is going to be harsh but um do you feel then that potentially you've missed out on love oh that's it um <laughs> me. yeah probably okay does that worry you for the future then because you've you know the single-mindedness and obviously single-mindedness can be very good and it can be very successful mm -hmm. in, in what it is mm -hmm. but you do find some people in uh, that, that are heads of business and things like that do then worry about what they missed. I mean, f this is a fucking horrible example, but I'm going to use it anyway because it's the only one that's coming into my head. Adam Sandler film called Click, where it's just like, no, I'm, I'm single-minded, I'm committed, I want to get my promotion, I want to do this, I want to do that. I, I, I can miss out on this stuff because I need to get to that spot. And then at the end of the film, he's lost his wife, he's lost his kids, and he's dying of a heart attack on the, on the, on the street. And does there, is there any part of you that thinks that, you know, you're going down that road and potentially you could have gone somewhere else and 
that love may have been somewhere and you may still be there to, to travel and you missed out on something purely because you assumed that there was no path that way or am I just making you feel bad for no reason at all? <laughs> you're not making me feel bad, but you're, I definitely haven't, I guess, fully thought of it. Cause as I said, I've just been in such like go mode of getting abroad that I, I did push away a lot of stuff. I do think not even relationship wise, but I do think friendship wise, I didn't let myself connect with people as deeply as I could have. Hmm. And so I think definitely that way I did miss out on it because yeah, I remember when I graduated from college, I said to one girl, I remember she wanted to keep hanging out and stuff. I was like, oh, but I'm moving or, oh, I can't. Like, I wouldn't let myself settle. So, yeah, I I haven't realized, like, how single-minded I've been. <laughs> like, not in a bad way. It's just, it's it's an interesting perspective or interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I mean... This is where I'm, I, one of us is going to get shouted out because you said she might be watching this. Um, what about your best friend? Because obviously they're back in Canada. Oh, God. They're not here. I miss her. I really miss her. <laughs> yeah. So how, I mean, do you feel that you're, that that's, that's because obviously you said you, you've missed out on relationships, you've missed out on friendships. Do you think that's a friendship that is, is that you're going to be okay with? Because, you know, it's, it's your best friend. So it doesn't fucking matter it's cool you can do a zoom call like we're doing you can do whatever or do you worry that that well do you worry two things one that you'll miss her too much do you want to go home a bit like we said about um uh, you know um missing home or the harshest uh, the harsher side do you feel that it itself may drag you back to your country because um it's the same as you missing out on relationships I mean, like, so for example, and I kept telling my fit, and I want to figure out how to get there. So she's getting married in June. Mm-hmm. And that was always a thought is like, like my plan is basically, I want to just get here. And then hopefully if I can, I want to obviously go back there and go to her wedding. Right. Um, but that was always a thought is like, do I push off England until after her wedding? But then do I keep pushing off England for other family events and friend events and stuff like that? um so yeah I, how does that how does that kind of because like, i don't <laughs> no can ask your sorry no i was just gonna say so so like like i say does that then feel that it's going to be a, a point of of being dragged back because it's that putting off for you but obviously that's still something that you're starting to think about now of like but you lost out on friendships is it something you're worried you're gonna you're gonna lose or is it just it's fine it's it it is what it is kind of thing I don't think it's gonna drag me back but it's something I'm afraid to lose okay definitely I'm sure if she is watching she's happy about that um (laughs) (laughs) yeah don't it's, worry, I've just found Skylar some cheap uh, cheap one-way ticket back to Calgary. I've just done it as we're speaking, so she will hopefully be there <laughs> in June. <laughs> yeah, like, I, th- it's things like that. Like, I want to put her first and go to her wedding and prioritize that, of course, and be there for her on her big day. But moving back just for friends and family, I don't think so but also I'm only two weeks in and could hit like the year mark and be like no you know what I want these people back in my life and to be there so I don't know yet yeah I mean I suppose the thing I'm wondering is because of the wanderlust that we suggested may be part of just your personality is are you going to allow yourself friendships relationships and connections here if that's always in the back of your mind yeah um that's actually even a thing i think i'm struggling with right now because i'm only in london for three weeks and then i'm going to go to devon to see some family friends and i don't know how long i'll stay there and so yeah i definitely think even just being here in london like i didn't like i've I've been feeling lonely and instead of pushing myself to really make friendships here i'm like why bother when i'm only here for three weeks so i guess i guess i am i am doing that a bit yeah yeah, like I mean, even like yesterday people like I've reached out to a few yesterday people and 
I'm going to meet one or two of them this week, but I'm also like, I don't want to make too invested of friendships in London, but I don't think I'm going to stay in London. But again, I don't fully know where I'm going to settle, but yeah, I think I am doing that. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the one advantage with England is it's not the second largest country in the world. So <laughs> yeah. you're kind of okay. Like you can, you can, it's a, it's a couple of hours at most until you can see whatever friends you see in England, but that depends on whether you mm-hmm. potentially stay in England. You know, Devon is probably the furthest away you can get in terms of connections or, or Norfolk actually, because Norfolk doesn't have any motorways because it's 1952 there apparently. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I suppose that that is one advantage, but, if you're always do you do you are you realizing that you're worried or are you worrying about the fact that those connections may always be at arm's length then because you're always thinking about going somewhere else or do you think that you will be able to just kind of go you know what i'm not gonna stay in london but i am gonna stay in england or i'm gonna stay in europe or whatever so fuck it of course i'm gonna make friendships or is it the case that now that you've thought about it, you're like you say, you're, you're going, Oh my God, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You've, you've put it on my head for sure. Cause I, I basically just plan out things as much as like in just a short time. So I only thought London three weeks. So I was just thinking a three week period. And then I was thinking of Weymouth. I'll be there probably for April. So just a month period. So I've been just thinking of in periods and I think, yeah definitely the way the way I think about things is it's just in chunks and it's like don't get too invested because you're gonna keep moving around yeah I think that is that is potentially the problem that a lot of people have with things like that it is this idea of yes live for today sell a v things like that but at the same time it's like if you only ever live for today then you don't know anyone you you're there's nothing else to be there so it's like I am I am someone that is spontaneous and we'll just kind of as I as I said I will just kind of go well, I'm going to go on a flight tomorrow like or, or or whatever because who the fuck cares but at the same time I think it does become a thing where you just go you know what uh, but what happens next if I continue to try and do mm-hmm. this I can't continue to do this because I have nothing to sustain this or I have no way of being here or something else kind of has to give at some point for that to be possible um, and I think some mindsets i think there's a there's always a a balance to have in that you don't want to go the other side of just going right i'm going to settle in this one village for the rest of my life it's my forever home at the age of 20 but you also maybe don't want to just be going well i'm just going to go keep going back and forth over and over again i mean think of yes theory even yes theory were in the same house for several years (laughs) you know and these are guys that traveled the entire world um so but they still had a had a, a point and they still made those friendships worldwide actually you know that's that's an obvious thing of they made friendships across the world in fact they themselves are from across the world you know egypt yeah that's france true. everywhere so it's it's something to think about so are you not renting at all properly then i mean because you're saying you're only there for three weeks and then you're devon and then so i mean what have you got like um, what's happening are you doing airbnb what's what's, what's going on Technically, this is like a short term rental place that I booked for a month, but because I had COVID that pushed me back. So I'm only here three weeks okay. and then for staying in Devon, it'll be with family. So I don't have to pay there. Okay. And then I don't know where I'm going next. This is all your family now going, wait, what the fuck do you mean? You're not paying. Um, <laughs> well, no, they, 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 they've offered. <laughs> no, I just, I just love the idea that they're just watching this going, um, Skylar, I think you're fine. Um, I don't think they'll, I don't know if they'll watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially not. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, so you're, you're kind of, are you, because obviously you're looking for a job. So do you know where you're looking for mm-hmm. a job or is it that you are looking for an online job or, or like a remote thing? I am. I am looking for a kind of more of a permanent job. I think in my mind, if I get like a home base of a job, then I'll create friendships and relationships in that area. I'm kind of looking, I'm thinking maybe still London, but I'm also kind of looking at bigger cities like Bristol or Manchester. I'm leaning towards Bristol because I think I want to be more by the coast because when, since I'm from the prairies, I want to be by the ocean and have that. Um, so I'm, right now I am just kind of looking at cities and I am looking for more jobs that I guess I can more settle with. Yeah. It's, it's quite, it's, it's amusing to me because you've immediately mentioned somewhere that's closer to your family. 
because Bristol is not a city that most people would want to go to. The Southwest is not exactly, that's a retirement part of the country. So Bristol is a kind of, you want to be there. It's, it's the closest place to your family that are over here. Because if you want to be near the coast, my immediate thought would be Brighton, which is very young, very kind of up and coming and yeah. where you potentially get those kind of jobs or South. End. I did go, I did take a day trip to Brighton and I did love it down there. It just felt kind of small, but it is in the back of my head. I mean, compared to, to Bristol. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bristol's uh, the small. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan. I don't of like Bristol. your hesitation towards Bristol. <laughs> um, there's a lot of issues with Bristol. I, I don't like the Southwest of England in general, but also um, okay. I, because I have issues with, because I've worked in universities and I know the University of Bristol um, because my main thing is, is mental health. Bristol has the worst record of mental health of any university in the country. Literally, like suicides from people going to University of Bristol are the highest by a country fucking mile. God, OK. So like part of me thinks that's because they had to live in fucking Bristol. Um, but it's 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 a it's a very it's a very strange thing. But I'm wondering if part of that is your mindset of going, I need to be near family. Because, uh, like I say, it's a very, it's yeah. not a normal place. Manchester, I can see. Manchester's going to go, okay, Manchester is one of the bigger cities. Or Manchester, Liverpool. It's also because everyone's heard of Manchester because of Manchester United. But mm. Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, I can see people going, okay, I can go there. It's just a strange choice. And I'm wondering whether in the back of your mind, you're already a little homesick, but don't want to admit it. And so you found another qualifier. Damn it, you're fucking calling me out. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Like that, like... Just even the last few days of applying to jobs, I've only applied to jobs in the Southwest because of Devon. Which, but at the same time, now I'm starting to make a few friends in London, and I'm like, do I go back to do I stay in London? So I think I'm I'm definitely having issues on trying to decide where to stay because, yeah. I mean, given, I mean, if, if, in the simplest terms of anyone that wants to move to England, potentially, uh, if you want to ever earn any money, you go to the Southeast. It, it's as simple as that. The Southwest doesn't pay. The North doesn't pay. The Southeast is where all the money is, London specifically, um, especially in jobs like marketing, business, social media, um, anything that's money, anything that's money related is in London, Southeast, but don't live in London for the love of Christ, because it's also where everything's most expensive as well. Like <laughs> I'm learning that. I think that's what, that's what I was hesitant about, like actually moving to London. Yeah, I mean, Hertfordshire, Essex, Surrey, Kent, West Sussex, East Sussex, um, Cambridgeshire, they're expensive, but when you compare them to London, they're really not, and they're commutable. Um, and I mean, for, for the, the obvious one would be Kent, because Kent is commutable to London and also means that you can go on your next to the, the, the road to, to mainland Europe as well. Um, but it is quite interesting um, to, to think of um, that you've always wanted to move away. It's always been the short term. I need to move away. I need to go there. Yeah. The second you've got here, you've gone, I need to find a way of going back, but I don't want to admit to myself that I want to move back. Therefore I will find a way of doing it without moving back, which seems to be what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so You're just making me realize this on what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but this is- I, I think that, yeah, that's, it is true. Yeah, it's, it's something that I think a lot of people don't realize in that what they, what they do a lot of the time is there's a big thing they want to do. And it could be potentially a lot of these moves because of the pandemic. Uh, and like I said, the pandemic was the big move for you. It was the big thing for you that made you go, I need to do this. Maybe if the pandemic hadn't happened, this may have been something you did when you were 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then being like, right, okay, I've done what I need to do. I've got, I've got myself some money. I've got, I've lived enough to get the connections I need. Now I can go somewhere else and live a more fun life or whatever like that. But the pandemic, and you're not alone. I think the pandemic for a lot of people has put people in a mindset either because they've suffered from mental health issues in the past or because they've suffered from acute anxiety, social anxiety, agoraphobia, and, and fears of what is going on. A lot of people seems to seem to have 
kind of got this, and I, there must be a a, a a mental term for it, a psych, psychological term for it. But a lot of people have kind of gone right. I'm just going to change everything about me, or I'm going to literally reach for that one star. And I think for a lot of people, yes, it's possible and it can be done and it's great. But maybe it's happening too soon for a lot of people. It's it's just that it's that thing that I yeah. think maybe some people haven't necessarily prepared and and like you say even an extra week for you in in the country you were almost glad of because it gave you an ability to organize and to think about things and i suppose yeah. the question would be if you want to make sure that the move is successful why did you not give yourself time to make sure of it already it was it's that kind of i need to break free um, it, it, I think that yeah. idea of, you know, someone's got hold of you, which is what the pandemic was, that someone's got hold of you and they finally let go. And instead of going, well, they were holding you to look after you, you've gone, no, fuck, and run. And maybe that's that's kind of part of what's what's happening as well. So it's just just a thought. It's not, <laughs> I'm not saying. It's no, like no, no, you're making a lot of good points that I'm now really thinking about. Yeah, I think, as I said, near the end of it, it wasn't even about, my plan of what I'm doing in England, which now obviously I'm trying to be like, okay, what the fuck am I actually doing? It got to the point where I was like, I just need to get on that flight. I just need to get on the plane. I just, yeah, I just need to get out of here. And as for like, why I didn't plan beforehand and stuff, I definitely, as I said, I started thinking about it roughly in July and I booked a t plane ticket in December. So that was about six months. I guess because, because I wanted to kind of still have things open and maybe this is a whole back to that wonderless thing of not committing to anything. I didn't want to fully look into jobs before. I didn't really want to apply to jobs before and actually choose a city and a job beforehand because I was like, what if I don't like it? What if I want to do something else? And I planned basically the necessities on a place to live on the flight, on the visa, on that stuff. And then the rest of it, I was like, I'll just figure out. And now I'm in that stage of figuring it out. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people watching and listening to this, including my friends and family that are going, what the fuck, Adam? You're always moving around. Shut the fuck up. Um, because I, but, but then I've, I've always, I mean, I, since I, I, I was homeless at 15 um, and I've always just moved around because... I'm I'm that kind of that kind of person, but I I don't I I am very transient in how I see things. But I I think I've come to the conclusion that, that is me, and it's just mm -hmm. it's just how how you do things. And I the stuff I do is online, and I can do it. You know, I was doing I did one of these podcasts whilst I was in Jordan. You know, so it was <laughs> it gave me the advantage. But it's I also tried to make sure I had a you know a central point like I do at the moment. Um, well, how long that's right. going to be is um, is God knows, but uh, it is one of those things. Um, but it's interesting to to see that maybe you have kind of you've run from it without making sure you could walk. Because I mean, especially when you're in England, I like that quote. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I mean, in England as well. I think especially it's interesting because how far away? If you're in Canada, how far away? How many miles away? You work in kilometers, don't you? Fuck. Um, kilometers. Okay, how many kilometers? And I'll try and figure out the difference. Um, how many, just, just an aside, any Americans out there, you're not the only ones that use your system. Who do you think gave it to you? We use miles too. Anyway, um, I have them try, I have Americans sometimes trying to talk to me in kilometers. And I have no fucking clue what you're saying. But how many kilometers away would you have considered, if you were staying in Canada, would you have considered a commute if you were back in Canada? I mean, I commuted an hour from my small town to my work during the pandemic. Okay. And that was with like icy roads and horrible driving. So that's like, um, so that's driving, an hour driving. So that, depending on, on where you could go, that's about a hundred kilometers that you could easily, you could do if you were on a normal yeah. road. Yeah, like I, I drove all over. Like when I was in Calgary to my small town, it was about just a little bit over an hour drive and that to me was nothing like I would go to the mountains on day trips for myself and drive like three hours just for the fun of it driving to me wasn't that bad okay like I didn't mind driving at all so my next question would be 
before you came to England, did you, uh, because of your family, did you know how big England was? I mean, I knew it was a tiny ass country. Yeah. Okay. So my third question would be, why didn't you look for a job when you yourself would travel from a central point? Because obviously there's almost nowhere in England, depending on where you're commuting, that would be more than three or four hours at absolute most. Fair question. <laughs> because you, you've done it in this kind of thing of like, well, I might not want to stay there. Well, that doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what you, most people commute. Uh-huh. And it's, it's that question, and I know this is this is somewhat turning into a therapy session. It's not meant to, but it is that question of why did you, it seems like you've made it so that it's almost like you've set yourself up to a potential failure and set yourself ready to go back, and given your given yourself the reasons to go back, because well, I couldn't find somewhere there because it's not the right point. Well, it doesn't matter because everywhere is in the same point. You've immediately started to look for places near your family. And it seems like you've you've given yourself that ability to go. I tried knowing in the back of your mind that you needed to do that, but that actually where your heart really rests is back in Canada. But you didn't want your mind didn't want you to admit it to yourself. So it gave you the opportunity to to give you a reason to say, well, actually, it just didn't work. Okay, this is a therapy session. <laughs> I I think near the end of it, the more I got from my family and friends, because people were supportive, but nobody's done it. They're like, yeah, go for it. But a lot of people, they're like, what if it doesn't work? Or like, they put a lot of, I guess, doubt in my head. And I guess I, I did set it up in a way for me to get my goal of moving to England. But I also had it set up where I could go back home if I wanted to and needed to. Yeah. And it's that, it's that question of how much did you set it up to go home? Cause I mean, it's, and I think this comes down to a lot about your interaction with your friends and family like that. I mean, my family know full well that there's nothing they can say to me on this planet that will make me change my mind. If I've decided to do something because I'm not that connected. Um, I, you know, I spoke to my mother today, but I'm just not that connected to, to my family. I, I, I'm not that person but obviously if you are someone that is connected to your family and feels the need to be near them then is that is that that you've taken it on board and you've just done it and uh, not realized it it's just a a background of your your mother your your father your sister your brother your auntie uncle every time you want to apply for something going well really well is your CV good enough oh is this is this the right place Maybe you should move near your your family. Maybe you should move nearer to us. And they'll they'll probably tell you, yeah, why don't you go back home? Because obviously you want to be near your family. I mean, how supportive of the move were those of your family in Devon would be the question. So the family in Devon that I speak of, I don't fully actually know. They're like second family. I haven't met most of them or I've met them really handfuls of times, but not really closely. As for like my actual family support support through all this, my dad is super supportive. Mostly because him and my house. stepmom. <laughs> huh? Your dad was just like, get out of the fucking house. We've had enough. <laughs> Not quite. Basically, my my stepmom, during the pandemic, she moved to Dominican. So yeah. they experienced this kind of new chapter. And he's like, oh, yeah, go go for it. Like, go travel the world. Go, you know, discover yourself, do that type of stuff. Mm. It was definitely probably my mom and my grandma that, like, had the most doubt because... I think those are the ones I'm most close with and they just didn't want to see me go because they didn't want to, you know, not be around when, if they need, if I need help or to make sure I'm safe, that type of stuff. And again, because most of my family is from like this small Alberta area and a lot of them are like, I grew up like from farmers and that type of stuff. um, They just never thought about the traveling part. And so they just had a lot of doubts and worries and like why would you go that far why would you do this and I think by the end of it I did get so exhausted with all their doubts and their questions I just I kind of did just didn't plan super far in advance I guess yeah it's it's you've I suppose there's there's part of you that's trying to appease them but still live your own Mm -hmm. dream but potentially the appeasement Mm -hmm. has broken into your dream because at the end of the day, it's your dream, not theirs. And so 
if the dreams are mended, they're the ones that are doing it, not you. Mm-hmm. It's still like they didn't like, for example, my mom didn't tell me no. When I told her I was doing it, she just kind of said, oh, you're crazy, but OK. Like she didn't tell me no, but she wasn't like, go for it. And that was kind of how most of the reaction was from people. They're like, oh, that's great. But are you sure? I mean, yeah, I, I just I've never heard of a family. The, the, the family that gets the, the most um, into people are never the ones that say no. It's a bit like the obvious thing of um, which which time are you most upset by your family when they are angry or when they're disappointed so it's i don't f- i find it there's never never that the family are going to say no if they don't want you to do something they'll just be like oh well we'll miss you and so i uh, <laughs> it's it's always that yeah. kind of that kind of point that that actually there is some worry about that did you ever feel then that you needed to because obviously you're, you you have some closeness with your family but was there ever a feel that you needed to just break away from your family as well or was it completely just that you had the wanderlust or was it just like, you know what, I'm just not the same as the rest of you. You know, like I've said with myself, I'm very much a black sheep. You know, I, I think my family would agree with me on that. I am the black sheep of at least this generation of my family. Um, and was that part of it or, you know, what do you think? I, I think I think so. And as I said, during this pandemic, because I moved back home, mm. that gave me the chance to live with my family as an adult where I had developed who I am. And I definitely, I was saying through the pandemic to my friends, especially like, I felt like I was outgrowing my family. So yeah, I think it was that. And to just get my, as I said, like get my independence back. And I could have just moved to a different city, could have moved out of my small town to get my independence back and get my own apartment or whatever. But it was, I think it was to just completely break free. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, do you feel that because you had to move back in with your family, that although you, you've become an adult and you've developed your own way of thinking, that actually the mindset became, there's a wording for this, but I'm not going to be able to use it properly. So I'm just going to use a, a wording that sounds insulting and is not meant to be. But do you think your, do you think your mindset became a childish one of like, well, fuck you, I'm just going to go as far away as I can then mum or as far away as I can because I'm not I'm not your you know I'm not this anymore and that pushed you to absolutely do it whereas really you could have just moved to the next um the next province and maybe thought about it later do you think that it was um although like I say the pandemic has pushed a lot of people do you think that maybe you're because of that it it made you almost as a um, almost like a catalyst for a, a bigger reaction and a bigger kind of explosion of emotional um, baggage that needed to be pushed away to push you further away from them physically, if not emotionally. Yes and no. Cause I was still considering like going to Vancouver. So like, you know, moving to the next province or Ontario. And so I still was thinking Canada, but I think what pushed me to get to actual England was still that dream behind it was just to still move abroad and move internationally. Okay. So there wasn't any specific time when you, like there wasn't a conversation with someone and then you just went, fine, I'm not going to bother with Canada. I'm going to England. Not really. I think in my mind, and this goes back to when you were saying how a lot of English people here see Canada as a place to retire to. In my mind, I think I still see Canada as home and a place to settle later. So I don't like I don't want to ditch the country completely. It's still a great place to live, but I think it's just like I don't need to be there right now. Okay, so you're doing it kind of while whilst you can because you kind of maybe felt that you had the chance to now. Okay, mm-hmm. um, I think we've gone around uh, a few things there, and obviously I think I've um, put you in need of of some counselling in London now, a- a- accidentally. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> was there anything that you wanted to uh, mention or talk about or just say to anybody out there that's listening or, or talk about um, yourself and your move for anybody that wants to that we haven't covered that you'd like to before we finish up? Not really. I think you've mentioned a lot of deeper points that I didn't think of, like just the need and the drive to get here so much. Like I thought it was just like, oh, I'm following my dreams moving to England. Like that's amazing, which it is. But I realized like how much other factors played into it. So yeah, I don't really have like, I guess any advice to like, obviously for anyone who wants to do it, just look into it and see if it 
if, if it's the right move for you and it's the right goal for you. And yeah, it was, it's definitely like, I'm still in the process, I guess, of figuring it all out still. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like I'm at the end of it. I'm just still like, definitely in the middle of it all. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as, as I will say for again, because there's going to be a fucking friend or family member here. I am well aware of the hypocrit- uh, hypocritical bullshit. You know, I'm, I'm well aware that I am that person that will do things spontaneously. And I went on holiday with complete strangers a week after meeting them recently. But, um, uh, you know, there, there's different points of life and things like that as well. But I think the thing to know is if you do want to do something, if it is something you think is absolutely there, I think as Scott has done is doing it is the only way you're going to know whether you really want to. But maybe check on why you're doing it before or after or during. Um, and just be mindful of why that's part of it and mindful I think for me is the biggest thing we talked about on the podcast before Mm -hmm. mindfulness is always the important thing because if we asked 50 million people how do you feel right now Um, and we said we'd give them each a pound if we if um, they could tell us we'd never lose a pound because no one really knows how they're feeling until they actually start to think about it in that moment everyone yeah no i agree define you know how many people especially in england because it's a response you're right you're right that's that's it the, the response is the same yeah. thing then nobody really tells you how they feel because that's it and i think there's a mindfulness in there that, that's built in that you need to be part of to know what's happening right now and that's maybe something i think all of us need to do you know whether it's um either at the beginning of um the day the end of the day the end of the week the end of the month uh, because we may know ourselves best but I'm going to do an analogy I've done a couple of times on here and I've done it on my other channel anyway, but I'm going to say it anyway. The, the thing that all what people say, and the reason I, I think mindfulness is important, and I don't mean it in, in the context of those, um, you know, mind, mindfulness people in LA in a yoga studio, I do not mean it like that. I mean it in terms of if you don't know, if you're not really connecting to it, do you really know yourself at all? Because if we all say, I know myself best, I know it. And this is the reason that a lot of people don't go to counseling, don't go to therapy or anything like that. If we think of that in terms of a loaf of bread in the plastic on the side in the kitchen, we think of it the same thing. You know, that one issue that I had or that one thing about myself, I know that. I don't need to look at it. I know it. It's, it's like the bread on the side. It's exactly, of course, it's the fucking bread. You go out for the day and you come back, that bread is still there. That bread is exactly the same. It hasn't changed. It's the bread that you left there. And that is when you interact with it because you still know it. That's the mindfulness point. Because if you go away for a month or maybe just two or three weeks and you come back, well, that plastic has expanded a little bit and it's a little bit of condensation on there now, but it's still the same bread. It's still the same. It's still the same issue. It's still, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. Now go away for a couple of months, two or three months, four months. You come back. Well, now it's a little bit moldy and the, it's expanded a little bit more. Okay. So it's, it's still that same bread. It's still that same issue, but it doesn't quite seem the same, but it's still the same. It's fine. Well, now go away for two years and come back. Mm -hmm. Well, when you come back, that's a mess of mold and of decay. And it is not the same. There's nothing there that's the same anymore. The bag isn't even there anymore. That's decayed. It's just a black and green mess on the side that you don't even recognize. And so you no longer know that thing in the same sense as, if you leave that part of you alone and you just barrel through things and never really interact with why or how or what is going on in your mind right now, when you come back to it, you don't recognize it and you don't know what to do anymore. So always think of if you need to have that action with mindfulness, with what you're feeling right now, do it now whilst you still recognize it. Don't do it when you think you still do, but actually you don't. So that would be my thought in, in terms of anything like that. Be sure of what you're doing right now, because when you look back on it, That's- you're not that's a really good analogy for sure. And I think that is, and actually that's why I'm glad I said yes to doing this podcast even. And that's what I'm trying to do throughout this whole process. Like I am a journaler, but I am trying really hard to check in with myself throughout this entire way, because I think that's the biggest thing is just to be mindful of like every step that I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I think that is important. I'm actually the, the, so we're recording this on the 7th of March and there's a podcast that has just come out from um, it's good to talk podcast today, um, which you can find obviously Amazon uh, music, Spotify, and YouTube called find your journey. And I talk there about double journaling. And I think that's a point to make because you've said about journaling. I also talk about double journaling, uh, which I don't see advised anywhere else. And I never quite understand why. And the reason I say double journaling is because if you double journal, you get to know what what is behind your actions depending on which way you're doing it so if you journal in terms of your mental health 
that's important. If you journal just because you like to know, oh, that was a good year, that's also important. And I think if you go through a point in your life where you come back on it and you go, I was not the same then, there was something good about my life or there's something bad about my life, and you just look back on a normal journal, you won't write down why you felt shit. You won't write down why, why you felt good. You will write down what happened that day. And you might write down that you smiled or you enjoyed the day or, oh, this was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the same as Instagram. It's the same as Twitter. It's the same as anything else. It's a filter. It's a right. filter that you've put through onto it and you'll look back on it a different way. If you then keep a separate emotional journal, one that shows you how you were feeling that day without the without the bullshit of what you were doing, just how you felt in that day, what was happening, that then gives you a separate thing. So now when you look back on it, you can put the two together and truly see this was this, this was this. And you can also see a way of cutting through your own bullshit. Because when you look back on your normal journal and go, this was an amazing day, and you look at your other journal and it says how depressed you were, how awful you felt, how homesick, how deep in your own thoughts you were, you can also see, okay, what language am I using when I'm saying this? Because maybe there's something I need to engage with now that I don't even realize about. And so I always like the idea of double journaling to give you that extra perspective on what's actually happening. I like that. I, I think I journal a little bit of both as it is. Like I would say how my day went, but I'd say if it was crap or something. So I do, I do try to do that, but I think that is something I will definitely try to be more aware of. Cause that's a good point. Like you have, I could be like, yeah, I saw these cool sites, but also I felt really lonely, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. And I think the j normal journaling, you can do that at the end of the week and the emotional journaling you can do daily because it's, it's it, it allows itself because if you do them at the same time, you never really get the the truth either way. So, but um, thank you so much for being Hi. on the podcast, uh, Sky. This we're coming out in a, in a couple of weeks from now. So, um, yes, we will we will have it out. It will be out on, as I say, YouTube, Spotify, and Amazon Music. So, if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, firstly, if you've got to the end of this, well done. Get yourself a cookie. You deserve it because fucking hell. Um, <laughs> but if you think, oh, I'd like to listen back on that because I was too distracted by the 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 pretty chessboard in the background or whatever um you can get it on amazon music and spotify um so do look out for there as well um but thank you so much for for being on this skylar and thank you everyone out there for joining us and we will see you next time cheers everyone thank you